Hi, I'm Katherine Taylor, and welcome to Let's Get Writing, the show that brings you the stories behind the stories you love. And today we're going to England, yes, England, where Dr. Gerard Collins and Janie Simpson are on an inspiring writing retreat. And they've taken some time from their very busy schedule to link up with me here in Newfoundland, Canada. And we're going to go right to them now and hear all about what's happening, as we say, on the other side of the pond. <laughs> Hi, good, good afternoon, I guess, for you, is it? <laughs> It is. It is. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. Yeah. Hi. So nice to see you. And thank you because afternoon for you is morning here, and I've got my day off to a great start. We oh, well. We appreciate the early start. Well, can oh, I just well, say, you, you mentioned uh, our busy schedule. We're so busy that in the time it took uh, to set things up, we're actually now in Scotland. You're down in Scotland. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Somewhere I want to. Yes, I bet so. And um, somewhere I definitely want to go. Now, I, we're going to jump into your writing retreats because this is what I want to share with our audiences. But before we do that, I thought it might be nice to let everyone know a little bit about you both. Let's start with you, Gerard. Um or Dr. Colin, I say, but you are, I'm going to say a few things and, and, and then you take over, but you're an award-winning Newfoundland author. And I, I love that connection to hear. Former lecturer at Memorial University, occasionally at UMB. Well, you're in a great place. You have a PhD in American Gothic literature. Um, so now what don't we know about you? <laughs> what are you currently doing? Oh, um... I don't, I'm not sure why people don't know about me. I, sometimes I feel like it, it's all pretty much out there. Uh, I, I can start by saying that, that I, I taught on campus at Memorial for over 20 years. Just absolutely loved it. Uh, um, I've, I've been writing all that time. I once took a, an entire semester off from my doctoral studies to write a novel that hasn't published yet, but maybe someday. Um, other than that, um, I, I'm just uh, just enjoying this life that we have we put together over the last well, it six looks, years. It looks so. like it looks like you're setting up pretty nicely with these retreats. Mm. Yeah. Janie and yourself, you are a New Brunswicker, and uh, I lived there for 12 years in another lovely province. Um, you write fiction and poetry and nonfiction. And uh, you've been shortlisted for the Arc Poetry's Poem of the Year. You're active in the Writers' Federation of New Brunswick. Uh, you do so many things. And you are the brains. Well, should I say that? Behind this operation, the logistics? <laughs> totally. <laughs> tell us, yeah, tell us more about how you got that great job. <laughs> well, I, um, I, have, I was the executive and artistic director for a, an arts and culture center called ACTS. And so I worked with some volunteers to get that up and running straight from, from scratch. So that work with that charitable organization and my previous work in communications and marketing and um, really kind of set me up quite nicely and events management to sort of lead into this role. Plus I'm an author as well. And um, it was just time, in fact, I just left my job. It was a full-time job as the executive and artistic director. And I left that in early March, right before we we came away. So I'm still adjusting to this idea of being a full-time writer who also looks after the administrative side of Go and Write. So it's a real privilege for me to, to kind of morph that training that I've had in the past with communications and marketing and project management and sort of take that and, and apply it to our retreats. Plus I'm a writer too. So, so it's really nice that I get to blend all of that experience into helping to kind of organize yeah. this. And Gerard and I make all of these decisions together. You know, we scout locations together. It takes months and months with negotiations and working with venues, working with coach, you know, coach, coach uh, companies to try to get the best prices that we can and work with fam. We often work with family providers. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a yeah. great job. I would say we do all of the planning together for all of these trips, uh, but, but Janie is definitely the chief organizer of, of all of the ideas and, and, and the various uh, people we, we talk to about, about our travels, about you know, hotels and coaches and 
all, all of these great places we visit. So, and I, I'm the one who has to have the tickets when we yeah. go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 Jenny is just extremely good with people. She's a very fun, happy uh, kind of person, and it just really lends itself well to, to what we do. I'm I'm a little bit grumpier, <laughs> but so usually in the mornings. Um, I'm a, I'm a happy, contented person too, but. It's <laughs> <laughs> Takes me a couple couple of cups of coffee to get going, but I always say I'm, I'm I usually try to be uh, very wise around 10:30 a.m. each day once. There you go. Well, it sounds like a great combination. And uh, Jane, we um, we share a lot in common because I'm an organizer too, and PR is my background. So when I saw that you had done that, I was like. Okay, this this makes sense, and uh, I handle the tickets too on any trip <laughs> that we take, and everything else. My husband says if I lose you, I won't even know where I am. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's I, I don't know what it is about it that I really do enjoy, and oftentimes it's people really because you're behind all of these tickets are people who are selling the tickets or are people who are running these venues who just hospitality is their game and that's that's what they want they want people to be happy and we want to find venues where our writers are going to be happy so it's just it's mm. it's, it's something i enjoy very much yeah. like we we that's arrived here last week at, at the yes. uh, Lock, oh. country house hotel here in the highlands this is this is where our, our fro one of our fall retreats will be and we were sitting uh at supper and i, I just started thinking about just the what we really want from these retreats. And we've been doing this for you know, six, six, almost seven years now. And mm -hmm. we really like we, we, as much as possible for everybody who is involved to, to be happy uh, in one way or another. Like we understand that these are people's dreams. Uh, people do come to us with their dreams, not, not just of writing, but of travel as well. And that's why it's go and write. So we're trying to combine the two things. And we like, the, we seek out venues. Uh, we, we're very good for the local economy when we travel. Uh, I think we're a good for the economy on both sides of the pond, actually, uh, to tell the truth. And I think, and everywhere we go, we just meet a lot of people who just, who just kind of, uh, kind of, kind of, I guess, impress, but they kind of admire and get it kind of excited with what we, what we do. In fact, uh, at a pub in the Cotswolds just the other night, a couple, uh, a couple next to us just engaged us in conversation about what we do because they, they, they kind of couldn't fathom that I mean, they've been in the Cotswolds the whole life, their whole lives, and we just travel all over the world just because of writing. You know, it, it, it is neat what you do. And I think for writers, um, to we, we all have this idea of, oh, I'd love to go away and write, get away from, you know, the bills, the groceries, and just go on an adventure to spark the imagination. That's how I would think about it. And actually, you mentioned um, Ireland because, <clears throat> excuse me, Ida Lenahan Young, a while ago on social media was posting all kinds of pictures and I was thinking now how did she get over there how did she or where did she know, how did she know where to go and if I had a known it was you guys <laughs> I imagine yeah. they were behind that great trip she she said she's been on them with you yeah I didn't actually know I had a, um, when I lived in Newfoundland but uh, she somehow caught on to us I can't I really can't remember how she caught on to us and so yeah, she went with us twice. Well, to Ireland and Scotland back to back last year, and she's yeah, already going yeah. once again like this year. And we, you know, we get a lot of different kinds of. We we get authors who are award winning authors who are uh, published quite a bit. Uh, you know, we ha we have uh, you know, executive uh, producers of TV shows and things like that. And some of some of them are fairly well known. Uh, but we also get a lot of people who are just who have a dream of writing someday. And just and or are working on something that you know, for the most part, they, they will probably be successful. And the blend of these uh, different kinds of people all on the same trip, uh, it has a sort of a Canterbury Tales type, type quality to it. To be honest, we're all mm -hmm. sitting around sharing stories together, and we all learn from each other. Well, um, as a matter of fact, I wanted to ask you if people are watching this show, and we hope they are, and it goes far and wide, and they want to go, and maybe they've not written a lot. What are you looking for? Can anyone apply? Absolutely. So we have people who are, we've, we've had people join us on retreat who've just sort of started journaling or who are 
you know, wanting to transcribe some of the stories from their youth and have something to hand on to their grandchildren. But we also have people who have published, you know, multiple, multiple books and, and, um, but Gerard is really great at meeting people where they are. So he, uh, he will read, if people want to submit something in advance, they can, and he will read that over and over again and prepare commentary on that, which he then shares with them while we're away on retreat. And he meets with them a couple of times. And, um, you know, some people are a little bit nervous about that, which is understandable. You've never shared your writing with anyone else before, but Gerard's just fabulous. You know, he, he's such a great, um, he has such a great grasp of good storytelling and good storytelling is important no matter what kind of story you're writing, whether it's memoir, whether it's fiction, even poetry. Um, so he has a great grasp of that and he's able to communicate with people and meet them where they are in their journey as a writer with studying the craft, whether they're just beginning or whether they've been writing for a long time. Yeah, we, we do get some people who are um, quite trepidatious about their writing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and, there, and sometimes people will even write to us and say, I'm, I'm not sure if I should go on this retreat, I'm not really a writer, but I've been writing and so on. So, and I usually, Say yes, uh, you are a writer because you've been writing. Uh, but there, I think there's a certain level of seriousness that takes place when people will spend the time and the money to go on a writing retreat. That they're not just going. You can travel with anybody. You can travel on your own even. Mm -hmm. But uh, to travel uh, with a with a writing group to be on a writing retreat, I think that that alone shows that you're serious. Otherwise, I don't think you would do it. And by serious, I mean maybe it's just something that you want to do. So uh, I I. I I tend not to, not to tread on anybody's dreams as, as the poem goes. Uh, I, I, I sort of I let people talk about what what it is they want from it, uh, and I, as Janie said, I try to meet them there. I try I try I I've never found never met a writer yet um, who who couldn't improve somewhat on the writing. I mean I, I'm the same way. I'm constantly trying to improve, and so is Janie. And we we all sort of meet on the same level in that way. Um, but it's, it, it just becomes, I, because I meet one-on-one -on -one with everybody and because I read all these writing samples in advance, I get to know everybody intimately because you're, you're reading people's hearts uh, and, and, and as well as their minds when you read their writing. So I'm careful with that. Um, I, I aim for, as I always say, anybody who's been on a retreat with us knows that I always say this about, about combining the truth with kindness. So there's no point in me reading your work uh, and not telling you the truth about it because that's what that's what you're there for. But there's no point in me just being truthful, but also being kind. Um, there's enough unkindness in the world, and uh, but I'll make sure that I make I blend that with with honesty as well, because that's that's what we're there for. Mm, I, I love how you've put that because I still remember as a, a writer first putting things out into the world and feeling very anxious about it and being afraid to do it, being afraid to share it. For example, uh, when I would start to have someone like you, and maybe even now, like you're, you're, you're wondering, though, how's my writing going to hold up? What's this person going to think? We have all those doubts inside us at times, and you have the, the tools and I think the kind mentorship to, you know, make that really a comfortable place. From what you're telling me, I, I can't imagine any better place to be with ideas and, and books in a supportive group. I mean, I love how you said it, Janie, that um, Gerard meets you where you are. And, and that's beautiful because, um, you know, as I said, writers at times were insecure. Anyone who's an artist <laughs> can be insecure about the work, even a well-published author. Yeah. And even, you know, Gerard, often um, we do have a lot of experienced writers who come on our retreats as well. And, you know, there's always opportunity for growth for all of us to get, to get better, to find the, to find just the right word um, and and improve. So, you know, there's yeah. something, there's really something for everybody to learn when they mm -hmm. come away. And Gerard, you know, he he's pretty humble. He doesn't hold himself up as the expert uh, knower of all things, but he does have a lot um, and he's got the, the chops to back it up. So it's really great. I, you know, I very much enjoy um, chatting with Gerard about all things writing. And I know from the reaction of folks who come with us on retreat, they enjoy it too. It's oftentimes their their favorite part is their one on one conversation with Gerard because he mm. he reads over every excerpt 
that people send him over and over and over again. And he provides commentary, written commentary on that, which he gives to people while we're away. And they often say it is one of their favorite parts because it's all about them and their writing. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. But, but also, when, I, I understand when, when you hand somebody a piece of your writing, it's a, it's a vulnerable moment in your mm -hmm. life. Uh, I, I, I don't care if you've been published you know, 10 times over or you've never published at all, but I hope to. It's, it's, it's a very vulnerable feeling to give somebody a piece of your writing, knowing that they're reading it with, with a critical eye and somebody, somebody who's done this so often before, as, as I have. Uh, so that's that's where the kindness comes from, I think, in, in understanding that it is a vulnerable moment. That I, I, when I share my writing, I'm vulnerable. And to, to that point, we, we do readings in the evening sometimes, sometimes sitting around the fire like we have here, right, right behind us, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we sit around, we, we have readings together, and everybody gets a turn. And nobody has to do it, of course. But the fact that there's no pressure just makes it a, uh, so much more fun. And so, so we do get this blend of, of published authors and, and novices and everybody just, just trying, trying out a poem or a short story they wrote or something, some journal entry from the day before. So it, it's an absolutely wonderful type atmosphere, mm -hmm. and usually in the background of, of you know, Dublin or, or Inishmore <laughs> or, or you know, Tuscany or something like that, or you know, here in, uh, on the shores of Loch Ness. It's, it just makes for just an amazing... Uh, a lot of people say life changing. I, I I tend to believe them when they tell me that that, that it's kind of life changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can believe you. And how nice to be in these environments and sitting in a safe and kind circle to share your work and and you know and 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 have people you know just recognize you for it. I think that would create confidence. It, it would just create a wonderful experience and and a good feeling about what you're doing. So, and this is what we want. This is, you know, a writing retreat. At times, you, people can hear that and they go, oh, that sounds like that's not going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of work. But I think you guys make it a lot of fun. So tell me about uh, tell me about some of the things you've been doing on this trip. And we're, we're going to have a look at um, some, I have some photographs. And, uh, but talk a little bit about what you've been doing since you've gotten over there. Well, it's it's funny in your in your introduction you mentioned that we were in the Cotswolds and and yesterday that would have been true, <laughs> <laughs> but because we're between we're between retreats, um, we just got on a plane and uh, then a bus and came here to to Inverness um, to stay at the Loch Ness Country House Hotel because we like to to meet the people who are going to be hanging out with on retreat. So it was great to come here. Um, can can I also add? That, that's part of the beauty of having a Janie because we normally what we did by, by, <laughs> by plane and by coach and then another coach, which because we had to switch coaches, then a taxi with going right, it's it, we, usually we just have a coach. You know, once, once you fly overseas and you land where you're going, right. you travel around together. You know, that's, so you don't have to worry about missing your, your connection and all that sort of thing. Which you get. Yeah, so, we, we have sorry. it all right. and, and yeah. put together. You're a group. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once you once you land, we're 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 together and and we travel together. Um, when we were in the Cotswolds, she like our our second to last day. We, or I guess it was on our way back to London. It was our second to last day. We traveled through Bath. We got to tour the Roman Baths, which was just incredible. You know, the home of like Jane Austen country. Um, oh, gee, what else did we do? We we, when we were in London, we took a great walking tour with this lady named Jeannie who knew London like the back of her hand mm -hmm. and was able to take us places where we wouldn't have dreamed of going. And we really felt like, even though Gerard and I had been there before, we really felt like she opened London up for mm -hmm. us. It yeah. became like, it became even very, even more impressive than it had been when we yeah. were there on our own before. Well, she took us to the Globe Theater, which, you know, Mm. Uh, of Shakespeare fame, uh, and it's it's a very impressive building. She took us inside, and and it made it made everybody feel um, more like they wanted to go to a play, which several people did, in fact. Uh, and, and but on the way there, it was only a ten minute walk from our hotel to go to the Globe Theater, which is alongside the Thames River. And just around the corner, I found uh, that the the tour guide was talking about um, oh um, Mary Wollstonecraft's house. And so this is this is where she lived for several years. And Mary Wollstonecraft, of course, is 
was was a famous feminist, one of, one of the very first, and the mother of Mary Shelley, uh, who wrote Frankenstein. And uh, so she lived just around the corner from where our hotel is. This, these are the kinds of things you discover along the way. And it's it feels per, it's not maybe not personal in some ways, but it feels very personalized sometimes when you when you have a mm. uh, show you these things. So uh, anything else you want to add to? You? Well, I was going to say we're here now in um, we're here now in at Loch Loch Ness Country House Hotel because we are going uh, to Scotland in November, and so we wanted to meet Aaron and Graham and the other staff so that we could really kind of get a sense for you know, what it was going to be like. Um, and so when we're here in the fall, we'll be going to Culloden Battlefield. We will be visiting uh, Codorick Tavern. We'll go to Clava Cairns, which are the Standing Stones. Outlander fans will be very happy, as will fans, right. fans of the Scottish play. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. And that's that right there. The picture you yeah. have up there now, Catherine, is of Sky. So we'll be taking a day trip to Sky and seeing, um, you know, the... Old Man of Store and Kill Falls. Uh, Kill Falls, all kinds of all kinds of different things. We have a great cool yeah. I, 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 you know, to look at that scene and think that you'll be there with a group of writers in a creative environment. Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty pretty powerful. Which is and this is uh, that's Ireland. Where is this? That's um, that's Ireland, right near the hotel we're staying the at. Sky, the Sky Road. The it's Sky called. Road, right in Clifton. So we'll be at Abbey Glen Castle in Clifton for Ireland. In December. Yeah, in December, which is great. We, yeah. we visited there in the fall um, just, again, to meet the staff, meet Ronan, meet, meet the folks mm. who will be looking after. Also, we like to eat the food and put our heads on the pillows, too, just, right. just to make sure of, <laughs> of what we're getting. And we make we make sure that, it, that it's you know, the best quality that, that, right. that we think it's going to be, right? Um, so... Yeah, so we'll be there at Christmas time this year, and so when we were there, one of the things we were we were almost a little concerned about is that they, they have a piano bar and, and a piano player each evening, and they and, of they, course. Have, and they have music. <laughs> I thought, well, is this going to be too sort of loud and raucous for a group of writers? The answer is absolutely not. We 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 went the first night with the, to try it out, and the next night we were like, yeah, we're going again. <laughs> we just end up like we're spending a couple hours just sitting around singing and. You, you're sitting next to strangers, quite often locals, and you're singing songs. Yeah. At Christmas time, it'll not just be Irish tunes, but probably oh. traditional Irish tunes. Uh, traditional. Mm, that sounds amazing, and I really have to look at your. I have to look at your schedule and and see if I can. <laughs> and you know, I I'm I'm look. I've been going through your material, and I'm talking to you and I'm looking at the photographs and then I see Ida Lenahan Young saying something I'm thinking like, is there a message in this? <laughs> Possibly a message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it does sound so amazing. And um, I have a few more photographs that um, let me just pop in. Oh, we'll have all of them up there. Um, and these are, um, I'm not sure where this is. You know where it is. <laughs> Yep, that's that's Lunga House. That's where we were last fall. Uh, we had how many? Uh, quite a few people last 20, fall 22. with us in Scotland, and uh, stayed at Lunga House. It was a great experience. Did a lot of writing there. That's mm -hmm. that's that's those are my feet <laughs> <laughs> in Saint John. In Saint she's, John, she's, New Brunswick. She's very talented. <laughs> Inspiration. They look like uh, Newfie socks to me. Or yeah. close to. She doesn't write with her feet, but she's not that talented. <laughs> and this is uh, this is Lily. This is the mm -hmm. villa that we stayed at in 2018 in uh, in Chianti. That was yeah. wow. That was a great. That was a very small retreat as well. Um, we our retreats vary in size, so sometimes we'll have you know a very small number, like the ones in New Brunswick at the Kingsbury, St. Andrews by the Sea, those, there are only five rooms in that estate. So we only host, you know, between five to seven people. Italy, I think we probably had about 11 people. Um, and when we return to the Cotswolds next month, we'll have 11, there yeah. will be 11 of us, but sometimes, nice numbers, mean, yeah. you know, it just sort of varies, but the difference between us and a, and a tour group, a larger typical tour group is that we do keep our numbers fairly small. And it's and it's geared towards writers, so it's we don't do a whole lot of on the bus, off the bus, on the bus, off the bus, because we find that writers want to settle where they are 
and experience a place and immerse themselves in it so that they can sketch with words and, and figure out where they are and, and maybe how it applies to their work in progress or informs, mm -hmm. informs their feelings about, about where they are. Well, I like I like what you're saying because that's one reason why I don't like tours and certain things because it's on and off. I like to go to places and get a sense of where I am. So you're right; you got us figured out. <laughs> you should because you both are part of the that's team, that's right? Of writers. It um, helps, and the, we also know that some that people need their alone time too. So that's yes. that's the other part of the balance that we that we yeah. try to strike is ensuring that you know. Well, Gerard, maybe you can speak to this because you, yeah. Gerard gives this great talk at the beginning of all of our retreats about the importance of. Yeah, it's mostly just trying to protect the the mindset really of people. So when when we're there on the very first night, I, I will usually remind people that yes, social time will happen because that's how that's how tours are built. Mm -hmm. We're on a bus together, we eat meals together quite often, breakfast usually, sometimes supper. Uh, so it, it's important that when, when somebody is either writing or in the mood to write or they're just to get just walking around or just sitting staring off into space, I try and remind them that everybody here is a, is a writer uh, in one way or another. And they're, uh, mm -hmm. except occasionally we will get a, a spouse or a partner or, or, or another member of the family or friend joining them who aren't, they aren't always writers. Uh, but the vast majority of people are writers, and, and that's why they're there. So if you if you get some writing done and, and a substantial amount of writing done during the retreat, then you come away pretty happy because the rest of it is is pretty pretty much set. Like it's not over scheduled. We like to leave room for people to wander around, to but also wandering to pubs or cafes or restaurants or uh, to sit beside the river or, or 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 the lake and that sort of thing, or to walk in the woods, depending on where we are. And find themselves alone, and maybe even feeling a little bit lost—not really lost, but but lost enough so that you, your your mind can start to generate ideas. So we try to make sure that everybody's mindful of everybody else. Uh, the happy vibes, the social time—that that's going to happen no matter what. I, I I can't legislate that as much as much as I'd like to. Sometimes I'm still I'm a teacher after, after 25 years. Um, well, what a what a lovely. Um what a lovely sentiment and actually I, I hate to say what a lovely way to wrap up this conversation and as we do i want to just pop up very quickly i uh, may not have it in right order but a few of your books in case um gerard people want to know this is your most recent one i think with breakwater yes it is yeah, yeah. And breakwater is a lovely cover right. series, by the way. Oh, i have had many of their authors on and your first book, I think, or one of the first. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for being here with me. And folks, thank you so much for joining. Let's get writing. Hope we've inspired you to write and maybe consider a writing retreat with these folks. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye now. Thanks so much.